Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the first webinar of the fall ser webinar series of 2022. And before we get started, we will uh, we would like to, uh, I mean, even if we are meeting in a virtual platform, we would like to acknowledge the importance of the land which we, uh, e uh, which we each call home. From coast to coast, we respectfully acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations people that call this land home. So now I will pass it to Alexa that uh, will introduce uh, today's speaker. Thank you, Amadeo. And so we're really fortunate today to welcome Sosere Kusikanti Marsano, who is a PhD candidate at Harvard University, set to defend her dissertation next month. She completed her undergraduate training at the Pontificia Universidad Católica del Perú, graduating summa cum laude. Over the last 15 years, she has worked across the Andes, from the Lomas de Lurín Archaeological Program to the San Jose de Moro Archaeological Program on the north coast of Peru. For the last seven years, she has directed the Cajamarca Archaeological Project and the Santa Apollonia Hill Archaeological Project, where she has designed pathbreaking archaeological research and fostered heritage development programs involving local communities of the Cajamarca region. She's the recipient of the David Rockefeller Center for Latin American Studies Travel and Research Grants, the John Coatsworth Latin American History, History Fellowship, John's Aubrey West Guard Fund, the Dumbarton Oaks Research Library and Collection Bliss Symposium Award, the Tess Mocker Fund, and the Russ Family Foundation Grant. Her heritage work is supported by the Spanish Agency for International Development Cooperation, and other past research projects have been supported by National Geographic, Sustainable Preservation Initiative, and First International Tourism Cares. So Sire has been an invited speaker at Yale, Brown, the Institute of Indian Studies, and the National Congress of Archaeology, just to name a few. Her extensive publication record has been featured in the Encyclopedia of Archaeology, Oxford Handbook of South America, and the edited volume Modelando el Mundo Imágenes de la Arquitectura Precolombina. As the founder of the Cajamarca Center for Archaeological Research and Conservation, so Sire is committed to community empowerment public and community engagement and reflexive archaeology. So we're fortunate that she's here today to deliver the talk titled El Apu como sujeto de investigación integral y multidisciplinaria, El caso de la colina Santa Apolonia Cajamarca Perú, or the English translation, the Apu is a subject of integral and multidisciplinary investigation, the case of Santa Apolonia Hill, Cajamarca Peru. So I'll pass it to Sol Cire and you can take it away. Thank you. Thank you for that nice introduction. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank to Alexa and Diana and the Canadian Latin American Archaeology Society for giving me the opportunity to talk about my research for the past two years in the Colina Santa Polonia or the Hill Santa Polonia in Cajamarca, Peru. If you would like to know more about the work that my team and I are doing in Cajamarca, please follow our Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok page indicated in this right corner. Let me also, I would like to point out that this presentation includes image of human remains. I would like to show you the Santa Polonia Hill or the Apu Rumitiana, located in the Northern Andean of Peru in the heart of the city of Cajamarca. From the top, we can see the entire valley of Cajamarca and appreciate the strategic location of this hill, a location that allow it to connect with the living landscape, landscape in the past and today. Because I will discuss in this lecture the importance of cultural heritage, I think it's crucial to understand that it's a dimension of this heritage and how we approach the study and awareness of it. I would like to start with this phrase. The way we understand heritage, heritage influence how we teach it. This phrase emphasizes the relationship between the individual and how this individual give meaning to the cultural heritage, like in this picture, where the symbol of a 1600 years old ceramic fragment come to life in a Cajamarca carnival costume. These meanings flow, change, and adapt, and it's important to, to, recognize, to recognize that certain objects embody or incorporate memories. We create, construct, construct, transmit, and inherit these memories. We, the researchers, are responsible uh, for the information we disseminate 
And that is why we have to constantly reevaluate and, de and deconstruct our ideas and the knowledge that we share with the society. I would like to organize the presentation around three topics. Heritage as a cultural context associated with the concept of memory. Present a summary of the archaeological research. And finally, talk about the heritageization process and community archaeology we are doing in the past two years. But first, let me introduce the Cajamarca Valley to locate us in this lecture. As we could see in this video, Cajamarca is located in the northern Andes of Peru. Here is the valley and the city of Cajamarca. That is a flat and beautiful plateau in the middle of the Andes. That includes, sorry, that is include a strategic a strategic location within the Andean geography as an enclave of the natural points of access to different ecological zones. Coastal valleys, Amazonian rainforests, Southern Highland of Peru, Northern Highland of Ecuador. My work focuses on the study of the archaeological heritage in the Valley of Cajamarca, around 50 BC to 1417 AD. The sites I will mention in these lectures are located on the hills or on the top of the mountains around the valley. Okay. Now we know where is Cajamarca located. Let me introduce the memory associated to this area. I would like to start this first part introducing the ideas associated with Cajamarca and how these ideas has influenced how we approach the study of this society and how this study has influenced the memory of the community. Using the general concept of memory by Pierre Nora, the site of memory or historical memory. He said that an historical memory is the conscious effort of group of people to find their past, be this real or imaginary, valuing and treating it with a special respect. Historical memory can be embodied in a monument or in a statue, among other physical representations of the past. So let's deconstruct the memory in Cajamarca. I want to begin by drawing your attention to how certain historical facts can affect our vision of the past, especially the urban history of many cities in Latin America that have been built on the basis of thousands of years of pre of prehispanic history. It is important to have a critical vision of how we teach and approach this architectural, archaeological, and living territory. The city of Cajamarca, or Ney Cajamarca, maybe is unfamiliar to some of you. Cajamarca witnessed what was probably the most important meeting in South American history. On November 16 of 1532 was the encounter between the armies of Atahualpa and Pizarro, the Andean War and the Western Spanish Empire. Finally, Cajamarca will be the place of defeat and fall of the last Native American empire, the Inca. In this story, there is an important idea that has transcended due to the specific facts of the defeat and eventual murder of Atahualpa in Cajamarca. This fact has strongly marked these ideas that the people of Cajamarca have of their own history, focusing of the Inca and colonial period. It should be noted that the Inca empire conquered the region of Cajamarca in 1470, that is, it only has an occupation of approximately 50 years in contrast to the thousands of years of evidence of human presence in, in its territory. Here we see a timeline showing the small time of period where the Inca occupied this area versus 1500 years of local cultural expression that the archeologists call Cajamarca archeological culture, culture or Cajamarca tradition. But this idea not only influenced the citizens of Cajamarca, but also the mind of the researchers who studied it. This idea has deeply affected the framework through which Cajamarca pre-Hispanic society has been viewed, studied, and explained. For mention only some examples here, Humboldt, Monier, Weiner, emphasize the Inca period where they present, they present Cajamarca to the world. For example, the Apurumitiana or the Santa Polonia Hill, this mountain 
in the middle of Cajamarca City has been studied archaeologically in the 1940s by Paul and Henry Braishley, although they did not record remains of Inca material in their excavation. On the contrary, they record material from the Cajamarca archaeological culture or Cajamarca tradition. The monumental stone, stone elements of this hill were associated with the Inca period. And even the function on the, of, of the entire apu, of the entire sacred hill, was simplified in being the place where the Inca seat was located. The Inca materi materials began to have more prominence than the hill itself, which also influenced how this apu, this hill, was studied and its history taught, was taught. taught. <laughs> Through my work in recent years, I have tried to criticize this argument, asking myself what happened when we eliminate these preconceived ideas about a society and began to reevaluate and deconstruct the stories that has been told to us. In my work, I try to explore this question, focusing on the Cajamarca Valley primary in the formation and development of the Cajamarca archaeological culture before the arrival of the Inca the society who modified the valley and probably gave us many of our traditions. I focus on the period Cajamarca around 50 BC to 1300 AD. Because we have a limited time, I would like to introduce the Cajamarca archaeological culture and summarize some of these most important features and focus on the work we are doing in the side of the Santa Polonia Hill. Let's talk about the general aspect of this culture. Cajamarca stands out in the Andes as a ceramic style that hardly changed in 1,500 years. This style is characterized by its unique and distinctive white pottery, a result of the use of kaolinite clays found in the mountains surrounding the valley. This distinct process of, produ of producing pottery becomes a sign of this archaeological culture, almost a denomination of or seal of origin. Existing white pottery has been recorded in different parts of the Andes, reaching distance as long, as long as 800 kilometers north to the mountain of Ecuador and 800 kilometers south, reaching Cusco for Cajamarca times. The Cajamarca settlements have stone architecture patterns that respect natural preparations and the sites are visually and formally connected by structures that look to at each other. The sites are located in the upper part of the mountains or hills surrounding the valley. People call them Apus or Sacred Hill. A local architect, Carla Diaz, has called these Apus Cerros Tutelares considering that they are a sources of symbolic and sacred spacing for the population. Now we can return to the center of the city and the valley of Cajamarca, to the Santa Polonia Hill or the Apurumitian. The function of this monument was mentioned in these chronicles as a place of call of the local, where the city of Cajamarca was adjacent. This is the hypothetical reconstruction of the architect Hartere Terre of how the Inca city would have located by 1532, where we can appreciate how Santa Polonia Hills looks. This photo shows the back of the Santa Polonia where all pre-Hispanic architecture is covered by modern field or sidewalks and ponds. We believe that due to its location and the discovery that we are making, the site was a ritual meeting place between the different members of Cajamarca society where they ate and drank in, abuda, in abundance. It is important to mention that despite everything that I'm going to show you, Santa Polonia was not considered today an archeological site. It was believed that it only had an Inca occupation that was destroyed. That is why it's important the archeological work in the Andean cities to recover this part of our memory and history. We are limited the site by sectors and we carry out test pits to be able to analyze the conservation status of the archeological remains in the site. This hill has been used and modified, especially after the conquest. It has been used 
as a sorry, it has been used as a quarry, as a city garbage dam, and the upper part has been modified some years ago to be used as a park. For this reason, the only area that we recorded the better conservation was the one indicated with blue. We learned that the site was occupied from the formative period until modern time, but the most important intense occupation occurred from the early to late Cajamarca periods. In this plan, we can see the excavation units located in the back part of the hill. We excavate more than 15 units, including test pit areas and trench. Using 3D model based on photogrammetry, we were able to register the remains of the Cajamarca architecture very close to the surface. I would like to briefly present the discoveries to date. In the part, we believe that this is, was the meeting, the meeting area, was in the top area where the, you could see the red, no, that is highlighted in red. Uh, we believe that this is the meeting area, possible a plaza where the rituals were performance. Unfortunately, the site was dynamited in the 80s, and we only have remains of the base of the walls and very fine ceramic material to consume food and drinks. We found many chairs with varying in a decoration, shapes and recipes clades. Instead of showing you in detail the types, that there are a lot, I would like to show you the most striking features we have recorded so far. Here we can see different ceramic spoons or cucharitas, small spoons, from the middle Cajamarca period around 15, uh, 500 AD. Some bowls with different characters, some of these character, characters we call the smiling face or cara sonrientes. Some of these charts present iconography of the lunar animal that also was recorded in other areas in the Andes. But the most interesting thing is that ceramic present narrative representation of the possible activities that will take in place on the hill. For example, the presence of people holding hands or dancing or in kneeling position, even with musical instruments in their hands. In the lower area, we find a very different architecture with, con with, with continuous occupation for the end of the Cajamarca period to early Cajamarca. That is from approximately 1300 AD to 350 AD. The functions appear to have been associated with large scale food and beverage preparation spaces. In this image, we can see in the architectural remains how the site presents an intensive and continuous occupation, presenting the typical Cajamarca architectural pattern of wall built from stone and local clays. The objects that we have recorded associated with these rooms were used to produce food and drink on a large scale as a strainer, meals, batanes, or mortars, and manos de moler or pestles. Due to the amount of material associated with the production of food and beverage, and because we are probably in front of what we believe were the kitchen spaces to supply the visitors or pilgrims to Santa Polonia, we invite Dr. Sadie Weber to be part of this project. She's a specialist in paleobotanical and archaeological analysis. Dr. Weber training local students in this kind of analysis, and we equi equi equipped a lab with a microscope. There were some fauna remains, and we already recorded in other side of the valley as the site of Icoconga. In the Cajamarca settlements, we recorded a, lar a large number of camelid remains. They are definitely raising this type of animal on a large scale to use their meat, as we can see by the mark of the cat, the, the cat bones, as pack animals due to the stress in their joints and size, and above all, for its wolves. Dr. Weber is analyzing microbotanical remains in Cajamarca, and one of the goals of the project is to study and reconstruct the recipes of the Cajamarca cuisine in the past. Although the site of the Santa Polonia Hill is located at approximately 2,750 meters above sea levels in the Quechua zone, there are no local resources such as manioc, algarroba, 
or mesquite, chili peppers, and arrow root. Chili peppers and carrots, two plants that still maintain their importance as flavoring agents, appear in the sample. As Dr. Weber considered, these plants probably has a cultural and economical value in the past as key elements of the kitchen, and this is why they were considered luxury goods in the Asian cuisine of Cajamarca. Ground corn, pumpkins, and beans were recorded. Fermenter, maize, starch were also identified, suggesting the consumption and perhaps production of chicha. Chicha remains, in import, uh, remains an important drink to Cajamarca identity today, and we propose that it has an equal function as Santa Polonia Hill. The detail that is perhaps the more surprising is the accent of important resources in the area, for example, potatoes or yucos and sweet potatoes, which could suggest that the food consumed here were goods more restricted to a ceremonial ritual space and not to domestic use. Something very characteristic in Cajamarca is the presence of goods from the coast, as we can see here. Today, the relation with its coastal neighbors is reflecting in its most typical dish dishes, such as shells, crabs, and fish. We also record some external fragments, such as stirred handle from the coast, and two fragments associated with wari of southern Peru. We have no evidence of conquest. On the contrary, they seem to form alliance with their neighbors. Also, we record miniatures associated with closing events. We thought these were productive production spaces be behind of what will could have been the temple or ritual spaces, probably, as I mentioned, located in the front and upper part of the apu. In the lower part of the hill, we can see a formal architecture with many textile instrument remains. Although the conservation of organic materials is very poor, instruments made of stone and ceramic are preserved. We record many torteros or spindle words, piruros and bone tools. We have made an alliance with Dr. Aide Quiroz, anthropologist and ethnographer, who is analyzing pre-Hispanic instruments, comparing them with modern instruments. For example, in this photo, where the piruros are shown, Dr. Quiroz wants to recover the ancestral, ancestral knowledge and with her work, help make visible the people and artisans who continue with, the, with this tradition in Cajamarca. On the next slide, I will show you human remains. In this space, we have registered human remains of children, a total of three infants and neonates as a closing event. One of the neonates was inside of an urpu or a large storage pottery. And one of these individuals was worried with decorated uh, metal tukus or pins. Finally, some metallurgic production remains were recorded and some idols in pottery, bones, and stones. This last part, I would like to explore the life and agency of Santa Polonia in the life of the local population and the community-based work that the project is doing. The hill, the sacred Apu, continued to stand up after the Inca, the Spanish, and although its importance was reduced, expressing its agency to the people of Cajamarca transcend through time. As Basigalupo, as Basigalupo calls, sentient landscapes that not only allow us to think and build memories, but also make us feel, move, build through that feeling and individual and collective identity. And we must remember that the hill in the Andes or the mountains in the Andes are living spa spaces that interact with people and affect them emotion emotionally and even physically. This is the Apu Rumitiana, a space by and for the people of Cajamarca, which connect both the natural and cultural spaces. Before starting the work with the municipality of Cajamarca and understanding that this work is for and with the, with the people 
we conduct surveys to be able to know the public opinion on whether they are agreed that archaeological investigation work should be carried out in the area. 90% of the sample population consider archaeological work very, very necessary. So we start these projects thanks to the support of local authorities, but also to the volunteers, archaeologists, architects, cultural association, and local influence who work with great dedication and affection in these projects. The first thing we did was create a, 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 a signers, a signatures, a, sorry, sign, a, sign about COVID regulation, and we put out information signs all over the hill as well. The excavations are open to the public and the archaeological explain to the visitors about the cultural materials that they are finding. This process was interesting as the visitor and the archaeologist because we are learn from each other. We also join forces with the local groups working with cultural initiatives and association, particularly sense to the APU Asociación Cultural who began to work with the children doing theater uh, stories and working with ceramics. Also, we are working now with the Association of Professional Tour Guides in Cajamarca. Sorry, like, I wrote this a little low. But most importantly, and thanks to the work carried out with the teacher, Elena Sanchez, and, archaeology, and the archaeologist, Lisette Gutierrez, we are working with the schools. We are giving talks and made visits to the archaeological site to more than 2,000 students in less than two months, <laughs> doing various workshops associated with a memory of the Apu Rumitiana or the Hill Santa Polonia. This workshop will continue until the end of the year because we believe it is very important that children know the work of archaeology or archaeologists and encourage them to preserve their archaeological sites. The Cajamarca area is one of the areas in Peru with the greatest destruction of archaeological sites, which is why heritage education is necessary. This, uh, I am showing uh, you pictures of the, the working that we are doing with the children, the team, and, and we are now in the, the video in the top of the mountain. No? Um, we also prompt the creation of cultural fairs that include the dissemination of local cultural heritage and the participation of local actors. We partner with young local bloggers like Jonathan, who is responsible for prom promoting cultural topics in Cajamarca. They are the key to the disseminating the information to every everyone in simple and no technical words. Also, since last year, thanks to a local sponsor and local authorities, uh, authorities but especially Dr. Weber, we have the opportunity to open archaeological center in Cajamarca to train the student in different techniques and have labs to process and analyze the cultural materials. We hope this center can grow and that we can include more specialists who would like to associate it and work with us. One important aspect of this project is that this excavation was done in pandemic work. The member of the project noticed that being part of the archaeological work due to this location in an open area, due to the interaction with people and daily discoveries caused in us a state of happiness or well-being. We also noticed this with the visitors. So we joined forces with two Peruvian doctors to be able to carry out surveys that allow us to measure the degree of well-being and happiness caused by being part of the archaeological process. Since to various volunteers, we were able to carry out more than 400 surveys and we hope, and we hope to present the results these years. As Sonia Atalay says in the case of the United States, if we generate positive emotions and sensations, we can generate well-being and heal wounds through heritage. We have also uh, started to make these brochures with artists about the Cajamarca culture. The dissemination of this information that belongs to the Cajamarca people is the goal to this project. But it is also our responsibility as academics 
to reevaluate our conceptions and theoretical frameworks within which we see and study the territories and the humans who inhabit it in it. And is the case, as is the case of the Andes. We have to try to get closer to local flows and sensitivities, starting with how this landscape has a, had and have an agency over people today. Finally, I would like finally I would like to present the team that is made up of archaeologists, specialists, volunteers, students, local big visitors, etc. Archaeology for us is a teamwork where everyone should be valued for their work and contribution. Beyond archaeologists and what archaeologists can interpret it and say, there is what Cajamarquinos feel and build, what they decide to integrate to their history and identity. You cannot preserve what you don't know. That is why it's important to know and rediscover our past. Muchas gracias. Thanks so much, Sociede, for such a, a wonderful talk. Um, it's really great to see some of the new discoveries that you guys made just, just this a couple of months ago. So we're lucky to, to catch you in such an opportune moment to see the new discoveries. And thank you for all of that um, discussion uh, about all the community work. I think coming from the Andes and working in the Andes, it really gives all the broader Canadian um, context. It, it gives it a, a very good and, and diverse example of how community work can be undertaken. Um, and how the different threads of what that looks like. So, so I really appreciate it. I wanted to give um, anyone the opportunity that's in our, our Zoom room right now to ask Sociede any questions. Um, and then we can uh, transition to our Facebook Live page to see if we have any comments or questions there as well. So if anyone has a, has a pressing question, feel free to uh, let us know and um, you can turn on your video or, and unmute and, and ask Sociede now. We can give everyone a, a moment to collect their thoughts. Well, I will then take the first opportunity to ask you a question. Um, uh, so I was really interested in the work that you're doing um, with the community, local communities around um, the textile work, some of the evidence that you have and some of the artifacts that are showing um, textile production. I was curious about what are what is the some of the conversations that you've had with with community members that are on the kind of older versus sort of uh, younger scale in terms of how textile production and the nuances and the knowledge around that how they're currently being passed down um and how some of that knowledge is is has been inspirational for some of the, the interpretations that you that you're that you're undertaking for, for the data sets you have i was i was curious in particular around is there um a sense of loss of a lot of these techniques and these traditions, or is there active, is, is there this active community engagement to make sure that this textile production knowledge isn't lost? So I was curious, I was curious about that, seeing that discussion in your presentation. Oh, thank you for your questions. Like actually, yes, well, something that, that we, the idea of have these open spaces and the people interact with us also is that Many of women and also men in the community, they when they see the tools, the textile tools, they that is why how we start like a, a working with these anthropologists and ethnographer because we are realized that they start like a knowing these uh, artifacts and they like a make comments etc. But of course, where uh, most people like a, in like a, say like a, in all ages, no, and they and that was. And in Cajamarca, we are losing these techniques. So the idea was like a starting a project, not only with the people that came and visit the site, but especially, and it's very interesting this part, um, I did a Dr. Quiroz, that Dr. Quiroz, yeah, they found that the grandparents of the students that we have in the field, they continue with these techniques. And then as you could see in one, in one of the pictures, uh, there is like a Dr. Kirov with a grandparents and the, 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 the grandchild uh, is one of our students. And also the idea was recognize the importance of these ancient uh, techniques and also re, um, how you say, like a, um, 
eh, revalorar, sorry, like I am losing my English, este, like, like that, this, um, uh, that, that textile production that continue to be super important in Cajamarca. We have one of the most fine uh, techniques in San Miguel, no, that is um, that also the, the same technique is, is using in Mexico and in Cajamarca. So, uh, and people um, buying this kind of uh, textile, but they are so expensive. And something that we learned in this in the past months is that we have to pay for that work because it's worth it. No, um, and the idea also is like uh, the people start to using more of these textiles. Um, um, it's important to appreciate that, that uh, because the, this project is in the middle of the city. Everyone has an opinion. When we are excavating, the people approach and they have uh, stories to tell about the site and the tools, not only that, the, the for textile, but also for like pottery and or when they see, for example, remains of the coastal and they they start to compare with the cuisine today. And this is a process to learn from each other. Sometimes like the archaeologists, we, we think that, no, we, that we know everything. <laughs> and then when the people start like a telling, for example, the piruros, that we think that they were piruros, some of them they are not. And women, they say, no, no, this is impossible. This is too thin or too you know, large, et cetera. So that is a process that, that we start, try to incorporate also in the academic area in, in this work. Mm -hmm. I love that too, the, the, the corrections that you can get. You're like, no, it's actually not, not this. It's not what you think just because it has a similar shape. So that's, I think that's really an, um, important to always keep in mind, right? And, not not only the ways of ethically why community based research and community collaboration is important, but also just academically and making sure we have the knowledge uh, correct. So so that's that's a really great. Thanks so much for sharing all of all of that background work, right? Um, with with some of the conversations you have in the field. That's really great to hear that and that, that it's also it's also I feel like uh, Tapalonia is such a great place for for this to occur because right? it is in the center of the city too. So. It's really fascinating that you have that active kind of urban environment that's constantly, you have constantly people people approaching you. So um, yeah, thanks so much. Um, so uh, I'll pass it on to anyone else who has any other questions. Um, I don't know if Amadeo or Diana, some of our board of directors, if they have any questions and I'm still waiting on, on Facebook, but feel free, um, si hay alguien en, en el, el cuarto ahora de Zoom, si tienen algo en español que quiera preguntar, so si hay, Bien, video para preguntar en español también. Uh, no se preocupe, igual en Facebook Live. Si tiene algo en español, escribe en español y vamos a, a dictarlo. Y, y solo si puede responder en español, no se preocupe. Then I'll pass it to you. Hay, hay un comentario de Luis Muro y Noñan. Felicitaciones por el gran trabajo, uh, Solcide y equipo. Ah, pensé que era una pregunta. <laughs> sí, fue comentario. Comment. <laughs> That's what we have on Facebook so far. But I, I was wondering, like, how how easy or how challenging it is to do this community work, especially at schools, like coordinating all of that. It seems like quite a bit of work. Well, actually, like, uh, is is not a challenge. Is the only challenge is that we have to talk like a. Ten times by day, <laughs> explain. Not so, sometimes archaeologists um, ending super tired, but it's our duty. Like uh, a, because, as you mentioned, Alexa, we are in the middle of the city. This mountain, this hill, is part of the memory of Cajamarca, and also everyone in the community feel that they have the right to ask questions, and and that is why we that we are excavating all our team. When everyone stop us to ask any questions uh, or approach to us to ask any question, we have the duty to answer. And uh, in that sense, uh, this is a really nice, like a, was really nice and soft uh, work. But with um, talking about that with the school, we start only with three schools around the, the, the mountain. And sense to the, as I say, La Professora Elena, that I think that she was here, and also Lisette Gutierrez, that is our, the archaeologist, the, the part of the team that, that is responsible of the heritage education program. We start with two, but no, sorry, for yeah, with two with two schools around the hill. 
And now uh, there are so many professors approach to us and the municipality of Cajamarca support for the next six months to doing work in education, uh, in character education. So we going to the school giving talks and also the, the schools or the, the children's they came to the to the to the hill and then we start like a tour and then we explain the excavation and some of these um of this initiative or cultural initiatives around the the the, the, the Cajamarca they start like uh, doing some workshops of pottery of and they join us also I think that the key of of the project is that we never say no to anyone that would like to join us and help because we need it. And I think that this is, a, as you can see, I am talking now, but it's a teamwork. No? So um, so now it's actually, it's, it's really interesting because uh, the municipality is also interesting in having a book for children to play, to explain the Cajamarca culture for them. Also this character that we see in the pottery, they are really nice, like uh, they're smiling and then they, the children love them. So we we are now working with artists to do some kind of, of like iconography of uh, like a painting books for children, no? So, uh, but yeah, it's it's a it's a lot of logistics. But I think the the key is having a in my in the case of that uh, educational program, uh, we have a head that is Elena Sanchez, that is a professor that they know the schools, the team that work with the students. And um, we have a, an, a group that work with her you know, in these kind of uh, workshops. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cecilia. That's, that's super interesting. And I, I really like the way you guys are sort of putting uh, all these aspects together as part of that heritage education and, and being able to involve you know, members of the community. That's, that's so great. Thank you. I have a question and well, first of all, congratulations and uh, it's an amazing work and uh, I'm just wondering if you saw like uh, what about the people that are visiting the site, do you see more older people, do you see more young people, uh, is there like a trend or is it like a mix of different age groups? Yeah, thank you for your question, Amadeo. And like, a, yes, it's a mix of group. It's a mix of people. Definitely, the children are the most interesting because in the beginning they would like to like uh, to see dinosaurs, uh, but but not, no, um, but um, but the, but the families. Also, this is a place. This was considered a park in the middle of the city that we don't have so many park. So people in the afternoons they normally go there for flying. Este, Cometas, skies, um, no, um, and then they are take for taking picture for spend time with the family. So they continue. O sea, this is that's why I say it's a mix. There is people that from different age. There are families that return. That is actually really inter really nice. Um, um, o sea, like a re we really feel like a the our worries you know, produce a, a, a good feeling of wellness because there is families that return, that continue. There is sometimes, you know, like uh, the father that return with their, with their children. And because this is in the middle of the city, they feel that they are part of the history. And they tell them to that, to the, their children. They say, ah, oh, you see, they are discovered. You will tell that to your grandchildren, et cetera. And this is a really nice sensation, um, but, it's a, but it's a mix. We normally have people all the day from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. On the Saturdays, we are uh, working with a guide tours in Cajamarca to doing free tours for people from Cajamarca. No, so we prepare like uh, we clean our area, we prepare the materials, and everyone that is around and they would like to come not only from the city but from that is also a really nice that we have people that from uh, outside of the city. No, uh, that they came and visit the site. So uh, we are doing normally like almost every Saturday. Now, now this is our, we already, today that was the last day of the excavation, uh, but but this is a, we start the last year and we, the idea continue, no? Also, I didn't mention that, but I the idea continue the next year because this is a settlement that was covered, as you can see in every hall that we make a hall and there is a lot of architecture and we hope that the next year we continue 
with more open areas. And also we would like to uh, not cover again the, air, the archaeological areas and expose these from the future, from all the year. But of course we need a lot of budget, no? And I hope that the, the, that the government of Peru could help us with that, no? Thank you very much. Yeah, and it's very interesting also, like, yeah, if you have tourists or, I don't know, like family members that are living, I don't know, in Trujillo, for example, and, uh, you know, they come and they visit, it's like, yeah, very interesting. Thanks. Yeah. Well, the Trujillanos, they normally, they are very interesting because <laughs> they, they are like a coastal remains, no? So as you can see that crabs, the shells, no? And the most common dish here in Cajamarca is, a, is frito con ceviche, no? That is a mix of like a pork and fish, no? And, uh, and the, the, the people really like, like to, to hear this story that, that, that people in Cajamarca in the past, they really like the fish, also the seafood, et cetera. So yeah, it's, um, yeah in general, we, we receive a lot of visitors, no? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, so well, we can uh, wind um, down for our Facebook Live projection and then keep those sitting here for any other kind of final conversations with the group. Um, so we'd like to say thank you. Gracias a todos que, que escucho, escucharon la charla de, de Sociedad Cusicaki Marzano. Um, queremos decir a, a todos ustedes uh, sobre las posiciones que tenemos disponibles en, en, en nuestro grupo ejecutivo por investigación y eventos. Si ustedes tienen interés, pueden contactarnos. A, 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 nuestro, a nuestro correo electrónico. Um, so we'll, we'll close off um, face, uh, Facebook Live and we'd like to remind everybody we have two positions that have opened up on our board of directors, one for events and one for research. So please reach out to us if you're interested in joining our group. Um, so we'd like to thank Sosire Kusikanki Marsano again. Um, and so we'll, we'll close Facebook Live and see you guys at our next webinar event in October um, that will be delivered by Lisa Oberholzer at, from McGill University. Thanks everybody. Okay, great. So we can stop the recording as well. Okay, I will stop it now.